viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel got us a 1999 Honda odyssey here and the battery is going dead overnight not dead dead but low enough where the car won't crank essentially what they call parasitic draw now before we begin there are a bazillion variables on how to do parasitic draw testing we are fortunate enough to have an old enough vehicle here without you know a bazillion modules in it that need to sit for hours and time out so be aware before you follow any of my testing methods if you choose to do so it may not work on your vehicle oftentimes on newer vehicles i will use an inductive amp clamp because leaving the battery hooked up is the best thing you can do and like i say we won't get into all the variables however um, we can discuss them in the comment box and i'm sure a lot of people will bring them up some of the old school ways you guys will, uh, who've worked on cars a long time will likely remember, you know, back uh, even in early fuel injection days, we could always take a test light, stick it, you know, on the battery post, touch the corresponding battery cable, and if there's current flow when there shouldn't be, our light's going to light. And in this vehicle, we have current flow. But like I say, that doesn't always work, particularly on modern day vehicles, that will burn you. The method I'm going to use. On this vehicle, I'm just going to use my DVOM. Now you don't need a big, big fancy one like this. You can use a regular DVOM as long as the fuse can support the load that is being drawn. Now this has a 10 amp fuse in the back of it. And make sure you hook your meter up correct too, because remember they typically have a different port for amperage versus voltage. So I'm going to take and just hook onto the battery cable. It's already unhooked because I didn't want a dead battery today when I went to work on it. We will hook it on the battery positive. I'm going to come down to amps internal. And we're going to have a, a look, see at what's going on here. Now, this van does seem to settle around this 250 uh, milliamp range. I did take a quick peek at it yesterday. Didn't have a chance to track it down other than the fact that this quarter amp draw stays there forever. And you can see the little humps coming up in the graph. Now that is the security light that's bleeping on and off on the inside. Now sometimes looking at these in graphing mode can give you a little bit of a clue, particularly if it's like a rear wiper motor that's trying to park, all of a sudden you'll see like a quarter amp draw, then like a four amp draw, then a quarter amp draw. And sometimes looking at it in graphing mode can give you an idea as to, you know, where the draw might be coming from. Uh, 250 milliamps is too much on these vehicles. Uh, these older vehicles will typically shut down, you know, near zero, you know, uh, 25 to, you know, 50 milliamps, something along those lines. Another form of testing we could use is the inductive amp clamp, which, you know, which I told you uh, about a little bit ago, best option on newer vehicles. Now, if you're Using an amp clamp, and let's say we got a low draw like this, you know, it's 250 milliamps. Sometimes the accuracy of the inductive amp clamp gets a little sketchy. Uh, it's hard to see, you know, stuff like that. I'm going to show you a little trick you can do for that. I'm going to take and unhook our meter. I'm just going to very gingerly put a pair of vice grips on here. Gives me something to hook my jumper wire to. Again, I do know, you don't have to blow me up in the comments, that this does not work on every vehicle. Sometimes this doesn't work. However, in this case it will. So we have our uh, clamp on there, essentially our battery cable's hooked up. If somebody went in there and hit the key, this battery would go up in a cloud of smoke. We're gonna take our inductive amp clamp, you can see here on the screen of the Pico, we're, you know, zeroed out, zero amps. We're gonna hook it onto our lead. We see, we're just going to have to kind of pick an average here. You know, I'll just move the cursor down here for you. Kind of pick the average, what's going on. About 259 milliamps. So that's pretty good. Uh, it confirms a couple things. First of all, it confirms the accuracy of our inductive clamp versus what we're seeing on a meter, and that's a good thing to see. Now, sometimes looking at this, you're like, yeah, you know, I'd like to see a little more detail, or I'd like to... You know, if I make a change when I'm fiddling with something, I'd like to be able to see it a little easier. So what you can do is make yourself a multiplier. Take your cable, and what we'll do is we'll just put like five wraps in it. So we got two, three, four. Let's see if we can get a fifth one here. So there's five. And the important thing is you know how many wraps you have of wiring. 
one, two, three, four, five. And then now when we stick our amp clamp on there, we should be seeing five times the current. Make sure I'm down there good. Got that kind of in a bad position. Okay. So now let's move our cursor here again. We'll come up here, kind of get our average 1.2. I'm terrible with math, so if we do, um, let's see, 120, oops, or 1.2, rather, we'll divide that by the number 5, oops, crap, I put little parentheses things around it, <laughs> like I'm some kind of, kind of scientist, I'm doing that wrong, I divide that by 5, and now we're down, you know, 240, so essentially 240 milliamps pretty close to what we were actually measuring. So that's just a little trick. Grandma taught me essentially making yourself a inductive clamp current multiplier. So there is a few couple little tips and tricks for you how to multiply the current on your uh, inductive probe. So hopefully that is helpful to somebody. I do know it is helpful to me when I'm doing current draws that are that are low and I want to see it in a little better detail or see its change. You know, you can see a dramatic change. Um, so yeah, I guess that's enough rambling and not much in the teaching mood, I guess. At the end of the day, my feet hurt for what it's worth. And with all that stuff being said, we will carry on. And now the most important thing is where the heck is this draw going? Let's get our meter back up here. We're going to go to amps internal again. Get this back up. When things settle out and turn off inside the vehicle, we're back to our 250 milliamps. What we have to do now is find where the draw is. Of course, that's our main objective. We do know that we have a 250 milliamp draw indefinitely. Hours from now, it'll always be sitting here, you know, 220, 250, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we're going to leave our meter hooked up. Here is where there is another bit of variables dependent on the vehicle. So you have to kind of know what you're working on prior to what test method you're going to use. Typically, you know, the current's gonna go out some sort of device. It could be leaking in the alternator. So we could take our amp clamp, we could just, you know, throw it around the alternator there or just unhook the alternator, that would be an option. Or the other method is we could use our voltmeter on a millivolt setting and go across each fuse and measure the voltage drop across fuses or on this car it's old enough we can actually start plucking fuses and then find the circuit it's on look on a wire diagram find power distribution see what that circuit runs and then take the testing from there i'm gonna bring the meter right over here hopefully you guys can see that what i'll do is we will just put this in a digital meter uh, right there. Hopefully that display will be a little bit bigger for you. Whoa. Alright, so there we are. You can kind of see it over there in the corner. We're going to start with the underhood fuse box. Again, there are variables. You start doing this on a modern day car, it will burn you. You will be chasing your tail. I'm essentially going to go through and just start plucking fuses in a row. Don't care what they run. I'm just looking for one that kills the draw or changes the draw but like i say knowing what the fuse is is not important at this point point. and again this is not the method you will want to use on a newer car because all of a sudden you just turn the module off now you just turned it on and you're waiting again and you just kind of screwed yourself on that and there we go look at that Right. Yep, now we want over amperage because everything's waking back up. That should drop to 250 here or thereabouts. Okay, so we're back to our baseline where we started and we're on this fuse right here, this big 40 amper. Uh, my gut tells me this probably runs a whole lot more fuses. It's a big 40 amper. That has taken our draw down to Zippo. Stuff that back in just for poop and laughter. I'm gonna finish going through the box here. Just to 
be sure. I don't know if that feeds other circuits in here or if it's going to feed internal fuses inside the vehicle. I think those are spare fuses. Did I already do these two? Like I said, you can use your voltmeter and just measure voltage drop across the fuses. You have to have a little chart to tell you what the voltage drop is supposed to be. Power Probe makes that chart. Handy little chart. So it was that big 40 amper, which they're calling the backup accessory fuse. Probably runs something through the ignition switch. Backup accessory. Now we know what circuit our draw is on. So I am logged in to Mitchell on Demand here. I want to find the identification of the underhood fuse box. Sometimes in the wiring diagrams, these will be labeled by numbers. And that's what we want to see. Uh, let's see here. Let's zoom in on this little fella. Let's see, we pulled that big sucker out. So in here, it's number 54. Let's scroll down here. Number 54, backup accessory. That feeds fuses 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 in passenger under dash fuse box. All right, so let me uh, get something to write on here. When you take good notes, it's key to success. I don't know if that's true. So let's see, we got number 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Should be easy to remember. That is in the passenger side. Ran that down. Made that mistake before. All right, so we don't really know what those fuses are yet. So what we'll do, we can take a peek. We will look at the wiring diagram power distribution and see who those are. They might be able to give us a clue, perhaps experience-based. What fuse number was that? 45, they were calling it. There's 42 and 4 and 5. Keep scooting down. Uh, 6 and 47. It's always on the last diagram, no matter what you do. You know, it was fuse 54. I'm sorry, not 45, fuse 54. All right, so there's fuse 54, underhood fuse box. It's a 40 amper, comes out of there, goes to the yellow wire, goes to the passenger side fuse box. And it's a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And there's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that one big fuse runs these five fuses here. There's current being drawn on one of these circuits. And those circuits, where's my little mouse? Come on, little mouse. The damn computer lock up. Oh, what in the thunder? We have technical difficulties. All right, we're back in business. Where were we? My mouse locked up on me. Uh, I think I jumped past, there we go, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, so it comes in, what are our options here? Uh, security system, tail light relay, combination light relay, interior light relay, navigation, audio, gauge assembly, sliding doors, field door switch, field door relay, climate control. We have a bazillion options. Passenger side multiplex control unit, door multiplex, PCM, we have lots and lots of options if we were in the, in the guessing game. Next best thing I think we can do is go inside, find fuse, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, pop them out, see if we can isolate it down to at least one leg of the circuit, and then take it from there. Are these numbered? Oh, they are. That's super handy. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The one is the accessory socket. I don't see. Well, there is some USB gizmos plugged in there, but I think the cables are just hanging. Plus, I think they shut off on Hondas, don't they? They shut the key off? I don't know. No, probably not. That was a full-time power fuse. Just be mindful when you go whipping that door open. If your meter can't handle it, poof, it goes an expensive little fuse. Not in my case, because my fuses are cheap, because it's not a high-voltage meter. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, that faces the front. So they're telling me this is number nine. 
Number nine is out. Current draw is still high. So it is not number nine. Oh, they're labeled on the box. That's handy. Number 10 is out. Still have our current draw. The meter's out under the hood because like every snap-on meter, it comes with excessively short leads. What are we here? Let's see, 9, 10 here is 11. 11 is out. Current draw is still there. It's always the last fuse, right? Number 12. Bingo. Number 12. So we are going to take, we're going to leave number 12 out. Our current draw, currently, no pun intended, is about 86 milliamps. However, we had the passenger side door open. So we're going to close the door. We took out number, number 12. We're going to go back outside. Right, so we'll look back on our diagram. And we're looking for fuse. I'm confused here. Okay, so fuse number 12. This is the fuse, so we've determined it's coming from fuse 54 down through here into fuse number 12. That feeds the passenger multiplex unit, okay? So that can get kind of complicated, and then it feeds the fuel fill door switch and the fuel door relay. I always thought they were all mechanical on these vehicles, but I must be wrong, it's in the diagram. Let's see, we got this listed as an LX, okay. So our current draw is either coming here or something in the multiplex control unit. So we have some options. Uh, we can do whatever is easiest. Um, I believe these multiplex units do unplug. We could stir up some, you know, some other issues there. We could find out where this fuel door relay is and uh, fuel door switch and see if the current draw is coming from it and then take our diagnosis from there. So I'm gonna do a little dig and see where, this, uh, where these things live, and then we'll make a decision as to what route we're gonna take. Help satisfy the curiosity of you folks asking first, what the heck's a multiplex unit? If you think of it like Honda's body control module, they've got one on the driver's side, they got one on the passenger side. I don't believe these older ones, you can even communicate with them. Um, so let's see here. This one here is, what do we got? This is something. Driver side under dash relay, that's a driver side multiplex unit. Here's our fuse number 12. All right, coming down. Yeah, 12 and 13 both fed this unit. So number 12 comes down and it is the battery input here into the passenger side multiplex, which controls a ton of stuff. Uh, as you can see there, you know, your keyless doors, lights, headlight relays, you know, all kinds of stuff uh, where we could have some potentials. So that is, I mean, you guys see, I mean, all, all kinds of stuff, lots of stuff. Uh, so, you know, we could have current going into the passenger side or the passenger multiplex unit and then coming out one of these wires certainly could. That is always an option. So keep this in mind. So I did some poking multiplex unit aside. I did find, finally, under, what am I under? I think the door locks. Where am I? Yeah, power door locks circuit. I did find, where is it here? I already scooped past it on you. Bear with me, I don't know what I'm doing. There it is, the fuel fill door switch and the fuel fill door relay. I'm assuming, I always thought these were cable operated on these older ones that prevent the passenger side or the driver's side sliding door from opening when the fuel door is open. That way you don't, you know, you're getting gas, the kids are screaming, they're trying to climb out the door, it busts the fuel nozzle off, car goes up in flames. It prevents that, is what I'm thinking. So we see here how we got a fuel fill door switch, comes on, turns on this relay now this white wire comes directly from our fuse 12 it goes in once relays activated where does it go up on this blue wire blue wire goes into the sliding door lock control unit and left sliding door so you know this is you know some kind of logic box here whether it locks the door excuse me or what it does uh, i don't know i assume it locks the door would be my assumption I'm curious, 
250 milliamps. Pretty uh, common spec on a, a control side of a relay. I think you guys would agree on that. Let's say, you know, uh, the magnetic side of that relay, the control side, you know, let's say that's stuck on. Yeah, 250 milliamp draw, I could buy that. I'm curious. Honda does like to use its solid state relays. Uh, some of these older vans uh, might use mechanical relays. The picture always sometimes doesn't depict really what kind of relay it is. This one shows, you know, uh, you know, coil and you know, mechanical type point system. I'm wondering if we take that fuse inside, if we, let's say, flicker it, let's say, you know, uh, this relay's clicking on and off, perhaps we can hear that. And if we don't, you know, what do we do at that point? Do we dig down to get it? I'm not even sure where it is. It doesn't indicate here. Perhaps we can, before we get that far, because if it's out in the open, Locations. We'll go here. Let's see where this little fellow lives. Fuel fill door relay behind left rear side trim panel, which I think the trim comes off these pretty easy. Probably easier in the multiplex unit comes out uh, without looking. All right, well, let's try that first before we get too far. They got our fuse. All right, little guy. Listen. Where is it? Oh, I hear something. Boy, I'm gonna have to go, uh, <laughs> we might have got lucky. Am I right? I can't tell if it's in the sliding door or where it is. Get right up there by the devil. I like the devil. It's just a dirt devil, don't worry. Oh, okay. All right, so what you gonna do? What am I doing? I'm gonna be flickering a fuse up there. Okay. Up there in the van. Uh -huh. You're gonna need to use your ears. Okay. We need to know if the flickering noise is coming back there by your soda can, which you put in a customer's car. It's not soda. It doesn't matter. It's not even sticky if it's spilled. We need to know if like the clicking of... noise is coming from your soda can area or in that sliding door we can't tell okay okay you're gonna be our ears and you're gonna relate to the people what you're hearing i hear you i don't hear anything i'll be quiet are you ready i'm ready okay Shh. i'll tell you when you'll hear it trust me it's going in not yet stay with me i'm not really good at doing this ready Wait, I hear it in two places. Well, tell us where you hear it. Well, it's definitely in the door. And then there's a noise back here. Ten like just the clicking? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, you hear that? Yeah. Now, I just want to try something. Because I'm not 100% familiar with this system. You just stay right there, young lady. Uh, I'm going to flick open the gas door. Yeah. Okay, the gas door, let me make sure it's open. Don't fall asleep on me. Oh, Come on. I need a nap. Ow! Okay, the back of the gas filler door is open. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Uh huh. Okay, so it didn't it really start, change. Does, initially, does it start out as two noises? And then it just ends up being a clicking. Do you hear like a foo -foo inside the door? It's both It's both in the door and like back here. Oh, it's way back there? That's where the light clicking is coming from? Yes. Yeah, 100%. We'll do it again. Yeah. The Towards light. the back? Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe. Is Did it I do it? Panel? Where about? Show it? me. Point to it. Use your fingers. Back there, huh? Yeah. All right. We're, we're good. Did I don't, fix? Don't, oh. don't you hate that? I do. I know you do. Good job. You're, so, yeah. you're like a little detective. Oh, yeah. So, what was it? This vicinity? Yeah. You sure? Oh, look. <laughs> right underneath this loose panel, maybe? No. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, crap. That's just a jack. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So here's what I'm thinking. I thought I could hear something in that door too when I was flicking that fuse in. So that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to look up some theory and operation on these, on you know the closer motors when the door shuts and then the cable pulls in and then it latches. However, uh, my thought at this point is the fact that when I open the field door and close the field door, the flickering doesn't change. Uh, this driver's door appears to be shut and latched. Yeah, it's definitely latched. Uh, we can make sure that it functions. I'm half tempted to go after the relay because the control wires, you know, from the switch are going to go to it and see you know perhaps we have two problems maybe the switch you know is sending a faulty signal which i think it probably is because it didn't change open or close so hopefully you guys are following that i don't really i guess i don't really need to know the theory at this point um it would be nice if uh if i knew exactly where that's that hoping to be out here but that's just a little jack I think these quarter trims come off relatively easily, so why don't we zip this off, find where the relay is hiding, and you know, we got there screw, got a little seat belt action. Oh, we got the stone ghost stuff or the back seats here, which have marks on it. That screw has marks on it. I'm wondering who's been back here, fellas. Doing a little exploratory surgery, I popped the speaker grill off, pops right off. Mrs. O did say she heard it in this vicinity, so I'm curious if we pop the speaker out. If we got a big enough hole, instead of pulling this whole quarter trim off, if we can at least get to the wiring or perhaps see a relay wherever it may be hiding. down here way down there there's a relay holder with a relay down down here and about in there of course you can't see my fingers but it is way down at the bottom I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach that with my digits uh oh where do I got my shirt pocket oh somebody's keys that is a bad bad habit Mr. Jones oh actually they're the keys of this car Never put keys in your pocket. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I can just get to it. I don't even know if this is our relay, but we're going to give it a go. Oh, come up out of there. Yeah. So that's a relay. I don't even know if I got the fuse in it still. Let me go put the fuse back in it. I put the fuse back in it. Let's see, this goes this direction. The double donger holder. It's in the farthest one. Don't drop it, little buddy. I just want to see if it clicks. <sighs> Let's see. This is pretty difficult to do blind here. Here we go, you ready? So that is our little guy there. All right. <laughs> you go right through the speaker hole. Uh, so that is the relay. What's up, Mrs. Oh, we, we found it. We had to reach in and kind of give birth to it, but you know, like an old cow. Mm. What's Where's up? Yeah, I like to go raw dog, if you know what I mean. Huh? Yeah. All right, well, we are on to something there. Uh, that's the accessory power. So look at a diagram. We know that our relay is being activated. We know our relay is not, you know, physically stuck in the on position because, well, frankly, we hear it clicking. Of course, we could we could test that real quick. We just check continuity because somebody's gonna, you know, 
say something about that. Let's go back to our diagram. That's more like it. We got about a 20 milliamp draw, and every time it flickers there, again, like I say here, we can get a little more, a little more detail on this for you. I guess we got 100 milliamps. Every time it flickers, the bigger hump, that's going to be when our security light on the inside comes on. So you guys can see that kind of scrolling across there. I'm completely happy with a 20 milliamp draw. Older car, not uncommon to see that. I expected it to be around 50. We'll have a look back here at our diagram. So here is the fuel fill door switch. It is fed a full-time power. I have to believe that once the fuel fill door is closed, the switch is open as indicated here in the diagram, because it wouldn't make sense that, you know, pop current was passing through it at all times. So let's assume it's open. And then when you open the gas door, you know, it makes the connection here through the switch, comes down to the green wire, turns on our relay, which is what we're seeing. Um, so at this point, I would have to believe that our fuel filled door switch is faulty, making our relay stay on all the time. And, uh, you know, essentially that's sending, you know, a command to this sliding, uh, what do they call it, sliding door lock control unit. Uh, which this may this may goof up the sliding door there. Of course, it's going to have the potential if you've got the gas door open and somebody opens that passenger driver's door. You know that's going to be could be an issue. However, this is an older guy um, who doesn't have any children. Just him and his dog. I don't think he's going to have that problem. I'm going to leave the option up to him how he wants me to proceed. Leave the relay out. Forget about it or I'm gonna to recommend to him fixing the fuel door switch and uh, take it from there. Now I do know that he had mentioned to me his head has been having some problems with the power sliding doors and actually thought that was part of his draw. Uh, so he had had the switch turned off to him. Um, so I guess, short of talking to the customer, that is, that is my best assessment. The switch is faulty. It's, leaving the relay engaged, um, right? That's pretty much all it can be because that relay needs its power side switch has a constant ground. It needs power sent to it through that fuel door switch. Now, granted this circuit here could be shorted to power. That is the other variable, highly unlikely, uh, but it is the other variable. Uh, fuel fuel door switch is the most likely culprit and highly likely our cause. Short of tearing the quarter panel off, 100% verifying that that circuit is not shorted to power uh, would be the only way to be 100% definitive. We're 95 right now. Amperage draw is still very low, that's good. What's interesting, this door is... Hear that humming? Yeah. This root latch is not functioning as it should. It comes open. It will mechanically latch. However, it will not electronically release. Yep, and then it gives us our warning beeps. Okay, and then that side over there. Stop that halfway. Close that, that door should pull in and latch. Yep, so you can hear that one latch. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. He's got two issues going on here. Yep. yep, no warning beep from this one. And then this door latches, so, okay. So he's got two issues going on here. We got the fuel door problem, and then we have the rear latch problem or closer motor. I don't know why Honda calls them the closer motor because the cable motor that actually opens and closes the door is completely separate. To give you an idea what these look like, this is actually from Mrs. O's van. I got 
Well, I guess we can do a show and tell on the whole shebang because apparently her van needs a new hinge too. Oh, this part that I bought for a while ago. So this is the roller hinge assembly. I think on this car, one of you're gonna find one of these upper rollers has gone bad and allowing it to go all cattywampus in there. Not a common. And then here, now it's gonna be a little different on this van before you blast me in the comments. Here is the rear latch, you know, these sit inside the door. And then of course, you've got all the electrical mechanism that can operate it electrically and then the actual mechanical cables that go to the handles and locks and so on. You know, like here, I actually did a video on this. But the video footage was lost, unfortunately. It was on a laptop that I had that the hard drive crashed and we recovered. Well, the actual laptop crashed like off my desk and it ruined a spot on the hard drive. And we were able to get almost all the data off of it, except for a few things, one which included how to replace one of these. So that's kind of why I've been saving this one, because I want to do it again. Because I already did the one door on this is those van. And now I have to do the other. Because it will randomly pop open. Just the rear latch. The door doesn't pop open like, you know, kids falling out in the street pop open, but it pops open nonetheless. And then the alarm goes off and all that stuff. I think I've had this for about a year. So we'll go put this back on the shelf. We're going to leave it at that for right now, folks. It's a smidge past five. The guy wants his car back for his evening cruise. I'm going to leave the relay out. <gasps> it's kind of redundant to put it back in because it's not functioning anyways and it's just killing the battery. Give him the choice to see if he wants us to tear into the driver's side sliding door, fix you know the lock actuator there, the closer latch, whatever you want to call it. Get that problem resolved and uh, because obviously it can't disconnect itself electronically you know, by pushing the button, you know, you have to pull the handle mechanically. Yeah, maybe he'll just leave it like that, I don't know. But the power door lock on it doesn't work either. So there's, you know, obviously some issues going on there that could be resolved, it's up to him. Like I said, it's just him and his dog. So maybe he won't fix it. Same thing with the fuel door, eh, you know, just don't open the door, I guess, when you're getting gas. How's that sound? The way it used to be in the olden days when you used to have to think. But I'll leave it all up to the customer. It's his call at this point. I diagnosed it, here's what the problems are. We'll take it from there. If I do get the job to fix this, I will bring you guys along so you can see what's going on, how to fix it. I don't really know, I'm sure it lives back there in the quarter panel, we're gonna have to pop that off and you know get the new switch in there, whatever, whatever we gotta do. I don't know, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that you go down there and click that subscribe button, ring the bell, find us on our socials, find us on Patreon. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.